All right, we're live. Yeah. <laughs> oh, we're here. Morning. <laughs> Happy birthday to Willem. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. This is the birthday edition. It's a very interesting yeah. birthday this you're, year. You're like 39 now, aren't you? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> 41. 41. It's a, your, I don't know. It's a weird other non-step. Huh? You're in your 40s now. I'm clearly in my 40s. Like I was still celebrating 40 until now. And I could still think that's special in some way. Now it's just not special. It's just I'm in my 40s. I'm even older than a day ago. <laughs> <laughs> or like he says in Fight Club, you're made of the same decaying organic matter. You're nothing special. Great. Yeah, the Fight Club. This is exactly what I needed this morning. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> you got your coffee? I do have my coffee. I don't have a special mug because as we already stated, I'm already over, but I've got the, the Little Prince mug. Okay. So I found this mug. Oh, cool. New mug. Yeah. Coffee, coffee gives me clarity, sometimes inspiration. Cool. Yeah. And what it says on the inside, which I can't show you because I'll tip out my coffee every day. <laughs> oh, no, you can see. You can kind of see it. Yeah. It's kind of... uh, uh, it says sometimes oh, there's a, there's a chip know. there. It actually says too much. It gives me the jitters. Very good. And the t-shirt? Today's t-shirt is little kids in a library reading type thing. Oh, wow. That's very good. I Although it, it looks like he's got a today. screen. It looks like a screen. Because like it's the light is coming out of the books. Oh, that's very good. It's kind very, of like the, the light and magic because there's all these like, there's, it's kind of a galaxy and stars all around it. Yeah, I can see. And all the these books of books. knowledge, right? Yeah. That's going to match perfectly with... It's all about notions. They say science and love and wisdom and art and wrath and... Logic. History. Logic and... So I know that we keep telling people and telling students and anybody watching to read, to, which I never do enough, but... Uh, or at least I feel like I don't do enough or don't read enough. And I'm always behind on tons of reading lists and... I don't know. Anyway, oh, you on. feel you feel like you don't read enough. Okay, that's interesting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'm like miles behind anything I wanted to read. Wild Stallions. Yeah. I don't get. Is there a reference I'm not following? Is that a band? Yes. Or? You, you don't know Wild Stallions, dear. It dear. rings a bell. It rings when a bell. I, I want to say. When I tell you, right? If, when you're watching this, right? Everybody should leave a comment telling Willem he's very bad from our games reference. Sorry, okay. I know I should get it. I don't know. I okay. Sorry. Here's the reference. All right, I'm going to explain a bit more. I'm candidly just saying, but maybe I should be a little bit more shrewd about going. Oh yeah, I know this. Uh, <laughs> I am Bill S. Preston Esquire, and I am Ted Theodore Logan, and together we are Wild Stallions. Bill S. Preston Esquire, Ted Theodore Logan. Oh. Bill and Ted. Bill and Ted band. Wild <clears throat> Aliens. You know, I never I never managed to watch the whole movie. You haven't seen them. I I I found out about Bill and Ted not as a teenager, much later. And yeah. then everybody made that kind of face when talking about <laughs> Bill and Ted. And so I thought, you know, and that was like years ago I'm talking. I was like, yeah, all right, I should watch that. I made through about 10 minutes and I was like, this is just the worst thing I've ever seen. I can't watch this. And I tried again and I made it like 10 more minutes. I tried again and I made it like half an hour. I'm not even, I think like 25 minutes is probably the max I've tried to get it through that movie. And then I just, I just gave up. <laughs> you watched Wayne's World, right? Yeah, but I grew up with Wayne's World. I grew up with quoting Wayne's World in the same way that you probably did Bill and Ted. So I knew Wayne's World by heart, literally. I mean, I love Wayne's World, the heavy metal thing, the over-the-top silly thing, but it's in the same kind of world as Bill and Ted. Technically, yes, and I don't know why, but like past, I don't, I just. I... And and then of course Bill and Ted overlaps with Rick and Morty with timelines and weirdness and history and like, oh my god, I can't believe. <laughs> I can't Sorry, believe. I'm like, I know this is very disappointing. It is very disappointing. 
But anyway, we'll move on to today's question. Today's question is, should I do a master's? Wow, okay. <laughs> Not me personally. No, I understand. Like, I've, you know, <laughs> I have the same question right now, or at least last year, because I don't have a master's. Neither do but I don't know if I'm well placed to answer the question. <laughs> do you I. don't either. Okay. You just froze. I can't see you anymore. Wait. No, I. Uh, uh, really? My back. Okay. Anyway, the. Um, I, I don't can have hear a you, but your video either. froze. And. Oh, did it? No, you're oh, back. I don't know why my, is it, my connection is unstable. Okay. So and I don't you said have your wife is either, using all the I internet. Tell her to stop your playing Fortnite. <laughs> well, I'm guessing she is. She might be watching YouTube videos. But um, your um, your T-shirt fits with the "Should I Do a Masters?" You don't. I mean, I think people think if they do a masters, they'll learn more. This is the impression I get. You have to do a masters if, to prove yourself. But yeah. you don't have to do a master's to learn, to keep learning. But the, so part of what's driving this question is on LinkedIn, it's, it's the time of year. There's a lot of my ex pupils, a lot of younger people I know on my LinkedIn are saying, I'm really glad to have passed my degree. I've, I've got my first in whatever honors I've got, and I'm going to do, do a master's. I've just got my master's and I'm going to be looking for graduate jobs. And then some of my colleagues who are younger have also, so like they, they work as teachers and they do a master's as well, or they're just completing their master's. And I think, I should do a master's, shouldn't I? I should do a master's. It's what you're supposed to do to prove that you're, you know, really clever. Well, and I don't have a master's. Yeah. I don't either. So I'm certainly going to be commenting. I mean, we'll discuss around the question, knowing that I'm not the right person. And I have a lot of different things to say about it still, nonetheless, because we have the experience. And uh, so I obviously can't be talking from the perspective that of somebody that has one. So, you know, but then again, that matches what, what we were talking about last last week. Uh, which is to say that for anybody watching and for anybody who watching was in, you know, in the category of you being your students or anybody that is a student that is thinking about exactly that question, because you have people falling on that side that you just described and you have people falling on the other one that are like, why, what should I keep going? I'm done. I've had enough of this, the studying. Um, mm -hmm. And you remember when I was mentioning last week, the young man that I, I talked to, is in oh, the yeah. other situation of, of he just finished his bachelor's and he's like, I've had enough. I don't want to keep studying. I've not really enjoyed the last of it. I just did it. And, but he still has the question, should I do a master's? Because society, life, everything in education and the job market says, yes, you should. Uh, and that is, I mean, just simply that is not to be discounted or discarded. Um, it's not a good enough reason to do it, but in the absence of anything else, it kind of is. In the absence well, of I like, you're not sure what you want, you're not sure what you're doing, you're not sure, then you're like, well, you, you, you'll be better off with a master's than not. Okay, okay, I see what you mean now. I wasn't sure what you meant, and now I get it, yeah. If you're not, okay, but that's interesting then. So if you're not sure what you want to do, doing a master's is a useful thing to do? Will it help you? Well, I mean, to answer the question from a very simple fashion, I think it's, you want to do? so, You may as well do it while you're still uh, in the game of studying and you're young enough to be doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, because so, for example, I, I coming back to France, so in France, I mean, degrees are important everywhere. And in France, they're just paramount. People are just it's incredible okay. how important it is here. Uh, ah. People live and die and, and berate themselves until the end of their lives for what results they had at school. And it permeates throughout the culture in a way that I had never realized until I moved back. Wow. I, you know, in the past, so I moved back a year ago, just nearly a year ago. I can't believe it's been a year. But 
when I catch back with people and I meet people in the UK or in the US or anywhere else, or certainly let's say, well, let's keep it to an English speaking country for now. Um, something like this never happened to me, which is catching up back, catching up with friends I hadn't seen in many, many years sometimes. So like five, 10, 15 years. And spontaneously within the conversation, without me mentioning anything about it, people would start talking about their exam results. And I'm talking about people who are between, you know, 38 and 55, who are like, well, I can't really be doing that. I couldn't have done that in my career because I don't have a master's. Or I only have this uh, amount of studies. Oh. So I couldn't, I only had this results at my A level. So you understand that that's why I've been frustrated with my life. I'm like, okay. <laughs> Yesterday wow. night, to give you another example, uh, and so this, uh, so you know how I don't. I'm trying to give comparisons for that makes sense for the UK and even for the US. Um, but there's social strata and social conversations, socioeconomic status, socioeconomic groups, right? Yeah, yeah. So very much true in France, but France has a whole very different uh, atmosphere because of the importance of the culture of the republic. And the way mm -hmm. that it's and the the the, the notion of uh, of secularism here mm -hmm. that you're not supposed to have any difference. Mm -hmm. So instead, it's kind of like the, there's a there's a different kind of varnish over because because we're just we um, we're trained educated in this idea that the republic and the nation and equality supersedes any difference. Mm -hmm. Uh, so the first difference is where you went to school, uh, what you learned, but still pretending on top that, I mean, pretending to me, I mean, if people from France would probably argue that point, And I, I, I have argued that point. People in France would get very upset with me saying things like that. And so often I say, I say something that I don't think was upsetting and somebody gets really upset at me. I'm like, Whoa, I, what, I don't, I had no idea there was a trigger there. Um, so yet last night, for example, I have another close friend whose birthday is about the same vicinity and I hadn't seen them in uh, a while. We've been trying to catch up since I uh, moved back to Paris. Anyway, I went to see them. We were all like a group sitting on a terrace outside uh, a bar, of a bar anyway. And uh, so in France, yeah, there are several words to say yeah. teacher. Okay. Okay. Uh, and there was a teacher at the table who taught in high school and was talking. Mm -hmm. And then and there are several other people around the table who have been to very, very, very big, important schools. OK. OK, so the Oxbridge equivalent. OK. But even more, actually, almost more than Oxbridge. And that's like the two top tier uh, <laughs> state schools that, I mean, carry a lot of weight. And for people who will have that, it's very important. And they were just talking, you know, talking down on the fact that those schools have now opened um, other uh, other um, branches uh, yeah. in Switzerland, in Dubai or somewhere, and another one in Montreal. And, you know, talking down on the fact that, oh, yeah, you could do Polytechnica, but Paris is the real one. But then, you know, of course, there's the, the one yeah, from okay. Switzerland is not, you know, it's not the real one. And I'm like, okay, well, it's just like, I, yeah. I don't think I'm going to get on with these people very much, but okay. Anyway, and something was going on and I talk, I talk uh, to the teacher and I say, and I say, oh, so where are your teacher? But I, I mix up and use the, the words that are, that you, so there's one word that is teacher for primary school. Yeah. Uh, and then there's professor. There's, so anyway, I use the word for teaching in primary school. And the two other guys from the big schools were like, whoa, what are you saying? You can't, no, that's not the, that's not the right word. I'm like, whoa, okay. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, no, I just mean, you know, I see teacher, it's the same thing, right? It's just like you're a teacher. No, no, it's not the same degrees, not the same studies. I'm like, okay. <laughs> so <clears throat> there are badges that are really important. And so in France, for example, I, I applied to lots of jobs and I was talking to another guy that same night yesterday who is a bit younger uh, and who was coming back from Taiwan 10 days ago. And he's uh, spent eight years in Asia and he spent a little bit of time in the States and he works in the same kind of area of me uh, in marketing. And he's wondering about whether he's gonna move back to France or where or what he's doing, right? 
Mm-hmm. Um, and he was telling me that like, there seems to be a lot of jobs. And I put, I sent a lot of applications and I'm getting zero reply. I get zero reply in France, like none, no replies mm-hmm. whatsoever. Um, no, you never get a lot of replies from LinkedIn or automated jobs. You just don't. But there are, for anybody who doesn't know this, and I think for your students or anybody young and listening to this or watching would be interested in the fact that um, a lot of the big jobs or big companies that are hiring and post, uh, you know, yeah. post ads out there for jobs, um, it's your, all the CVs or resumes that are picked up are pre-read by a machine. So there are HR software that does that for you. Mm-hmm. And you can, you know, for example, just to mm-hmm. filter out things they go, well, you know, anybody who doesn't have a master's on their, on their CV just mm-hmm. gets out. And that's, I mean, I'm not making this up. This is true. Yeah. So should you do a master's? I mean, it's always like a lot of our questions are yes and no, right? If you want to do one and you don't know what you're doing. Now, the other alternative is you don't really know what you're doing. You had enough of studying, then go take a break and go travel for a while. That's what I would say, or take a job. Mm-hmm. Now, you don't need one, but you have to realize that if you're not in the right club and, you know, having a master's is, but it's like the, you know, the wide open club, the kind of schools I was talking about earlier are the more exclusive type clubs, right? Um, and there are very, very few, at least in France, and some of the, there are people that um, uh, criticize the system because those big schools yeah. were created by the state to for equality, uh, supposed to be yep. equal opportunity yep. on merit, yep. except that the reality is like, well, they're always the very, very rich people coming from exactly the same yep. neighborhood that happened to be in that school maybe maybe one out of the whole promo might come from somewhere else and maybe not the same socioeconomic status maybe yep. but probably not and, i mean the know, same thing the shocker same thing they're happens. all pretty much white as well shocker, yeah you know yeah yeah the same, same thing happens in england like not the, to say that but yeah you know the the it's the same thing in our school like the the parents want their children to go to a Russell Group University. The Russell Group Universities are the better universities. Even though the Russell Group was a totally made up thing. And it was just a group of universities decided to get together and say, oh, we're going to be, I, I, someone might correct me if I'm wrong, but as I understand it, the Russell Group, a bunch of universities get together and go, we want to make sure that our standards are really good. And there was one university that decided that my one of my friends works at, I think it's Leicester. Yeah, I think it's Leicester University that had the chance to be part of the Russell Group but decided not to for some reason. So they're not a Russell Group University. But of course, Russell Group Universities have got this kind of reputation as being like way better than everyone else. And the, the parents of the people at my school want their children to go to a Russell Group University. And it's there, it's it is about and having a master's is about status. It's about like the badge. It's what can you communicate? Yeah. And sometimes I have to say, I have felt around colleagues who have a master's and I, I'm noticing now, like I joke about it, like, oh, I'm, I'm not as good as you because I don't have a master's. And there is that sense of like, oh, I should, or that means I'm not as good as, even though if you probably looked at, my experience or your experience or the results we've been company in a in an organization they'd probably trump what they've done because the experience and the producing the results in the real world you're really I trailing off and it's I'll it's difficult to understand you james i'm sorry you have a master's or not okay so i was saying you were saying about badges yes the class yeah, you started by saying sometimes you notice when you're with uh, somebody who has a master's that you think yeah. you might make a joke that you're not as good, but the joke is not entirely a joke, right? Yeah, it, it, it does. It reinforces the differences. And then the second thing I was saying is that parents at my school want their children to go to a Russell Group University. Yes, I got that part. And you got the bit about the Russell Group being different, even though yes, it's just a made that, up thing. All that part. Yeah, 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 I got that. And then the, the thing... The last bit 
was about the oh yeah this was it so even though i don't have a master's the results i've produced and you might i hope you can back this up right because i think you find the same thing the things i've done and the results i've produced in the companies that i work for are it doesn't matter whether you've done a master's or not the results speak for themselves you know like sometimes what I read online is like it doesn't matter whether you you don't have to have a qualification to be an expert the it's no, you, you know what could, well, what have you done it depends so there's also yeah but like agree, a doctor and exactly yeah there's also then i mean we'll circle back to this we, we don't, i don't want to discount them I mean, it's kind of weird to, for that to come afterwards but that you are learning more stuff about your topic and your discipline when you go do a master's or further studies and there mm -hmm. are lines of work where you need to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, the vet, doctor, possibly, probably accountant. A lawyer. Yeah. Or all kinds of, like, all those um, legal, legal or even, well, political is an interesting one because you don't actually need it, but you kind of all, almost do. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, they're always the, outliers. So, and you don't need all of this. You, you really don't. But it is worth considering that it is very. So, and you can go back to studying later. Hmm. And that's the other part I wanted to talk about. So, so, and this is a theme that we circle back around and we talk about because I think it's consistent with the type of stuff that we talk about. If we're for so for anybody who's watched more than one of our conversations, you've heard that I talk about um, the importance of realizing what environment you live in and this conversation about having a master's and knowing what it represents for people and knowing what it represents to have that kind of status that kind of badge within the different social circles that you may or may not yeah. be revolving around or be yeah. living in matters yeah uh, now after that you can choose whether you want that or not uh it's difficult because some of the people who have the status will think that it's important because we take it very all ser also seriously. Also, and you know, you, you might not know what you want to do and that might be why you're wondering if you want to do a master's or not. Um, if you know what you want to do and it has nothing to do and you're like, there's no bearing on you having a master's or not. For example, I don't know, you want to be a master florist. Do you really need a, like, and you're studying, you happen to be studying geography and you're like, well, I, maybe you don't need a master's in geography. What you really need to do is spend more time doing floral arrangements hmm. uh, and learn with a master. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If Have you, you know seen that, um... then great. And if you want to do any kind of craft, yeah, then studying in a Russell Group yeah. University might not help you be better at your craft. Yeah. I'm oh, sorry. Did you hear my wife just say, oh my God, why are you in here? <laughs> we can what hear you what tell oh she needs some plastic gloves okay we're in here <laughs> she was about to walk in i'm going to get out of the gloves but you still hear me because i got a headset on so davina's my wife right we're down here davina because the internet went rubbish upstairs you can close your camera down for a second if you want yeah no, or if right. you need here we go there you go, Davina. Real life, guys. Sometimes I joke about don't get married, but it's not true. Being married is great. In fact, what I say about marriage is all the good things are even better and all the bad things are even worse. <laughs> it's great. The stakes are higher <laughs> when you're married. Yes, that's a whole other question. <laughs> <laughs> Which we might get to, you never know. I think we but should the, get to a romance and dating at some point. We, we definitely should, because I love talking about all that stuff. I love yeah. it. That's my like favorite area. But this, um, right. this the thing about masters and the yes. thing about badges and the thing about state, I think it comes a lot of the time down to status, because my mum has been saying to me, she thinks I should do a masters. And I've been saying, no, I've got like a bunch of different business ideas I'm looking at, building a coaching business, as well as like being a teacher and full-time teacher, other time entrepreneur is what I say. And I said, I'm exploring this and I'm really enjoying it and I'm having some success with it. And, but she's still like, no, you should do a master's. Now, like I happen to have found a master's I would really love to do. And you can do it whilst 
being in a job, That's which great. is a, a master's in data analytics. I just like an MSc. Really? I'd love to do it. I'd love to do it. And okay. um, the, but then the idea of working specifically as a teacher and doing a master's could be pretty challenging. It's going to be and challenging. It's challenging. So that's another reason. So I started talking about that, but I didn't finish my thought. I think um, I, I moving back to France and having shared how important it is here. I was thinking, okay, well, maybe I should go back to studying and studying in France doesn't cost that much money or what I was hoping for uh, is to, there's, there are a set of programs uh, or init government initiatives to be able to validate your professional experience towards credit for a degree. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, so I want to do, I wanted, want maybe to do that because I think it would be great for me to have a master's. On one hand, I was thinking it'd be really interesting to go back to study topics that I'm interested in. Mm -hmm. um, now, on the other hand, as we said, you can just read the books. You don't necessarily need to have the studies, but it is also, I mean, the, the, the badge is also a marker of its validation. It is a validation by the institution of education, the university, that you are qualified and that you have studied all the things to be able to talk about, you know, sociology, anthropology, philosophy, whatever it is, or data analytics. Yeah. Um, and that is not to be, I mean, not to be diminished as well. Like that's also very valid and very important. And, and you know, how do we judge otherwise by having systems that say, yes, this person is qualified to be able to talk about that particular thing. Hmm. Um, or to not to know about to anyway and um but the, but the and i don't know about the uk but the the systems the admin the getting mm -hmm. back into it is so mm -hmm. complex complicated like this oh, is wow, just really? byzantine dealing with weird administrations who are not making it helpful and also the education system is its own beast they have their <laughs> own language they have their own codes they have their own and, and I'm like asking questions by email or trying to get people on the phone from different universities to try to understand, like, how do I apply to this? How does it work? And they're talking back at me with their own jargon that doesn't make sense to me. Wow. And I, and it seems like they have other things to do that are way more important than talking to me about my potential studies. And so the experience is that it's complex. So one, I did apply and I had one meeting with, uh, with a big school for a uh, master's and I was turned down. And I was really disappointed. So for a little bit at the end of last year, I was like, well, screw this. I'm not going to do it. Um, and that, but I also did make inquiries about others and it just seems extremely complex to try to understand how to navigate it, mm. uh, let alone the fact that it would be challenging to work at the same time, that it would mm. be demanding, that mm. it would take something for me to not only do it in French, but I've been so much more used to thinking and writing in English for the past 15 years. Uh, and to learn how, what is expected of me, because mm, in mm. French education, that is something that is, mm. that is not explained. You have, to do, you have to either have parents that explain it to you. And my parents didn't know that. Uh, so by the time you come around the last year of high school, and even more so in university, the essays and the essay topics seem open. So it's like going to be one question, right? Mm. Like you're asking me, you know, should you do a master's? Uh, particularly in, in human sciences. And so, but actually they are keywords and there are exact ways to answer all of those in the way that you write an essay that if you don't, and you're, you're not taught that. You're not taught that in school? No, you're not taught how you're supposed to answer. <laughs> so much of what I teach, it is blowing my mind because so much of how, what I incorporate into my teaching is how to, find it how to find the key point how to construct your paragraphs how to build an essay how to build an argument you're not taught that in france i mean you are a little <laughs> bit in, in in french literature but when you get to university there's a different other way of answering and you don't spend i mean maybe i'm wrong i'm gonna have to double check this but but generally speaking there is a certain way to answer that mm -hmm. you're not taught and you're wow. supposed to divine it. And it's like, it's kind of insider no, knowledge that is super weird. That's really interesting because I think that compares with my, a bit of the unspoken kind of class stuff that happens. So my brother-in-law, when he was going to apply for university, he had the grades and the subjects to be able to go and look around Oxford and Cambridge. So I think he went and had a look around Oxford 
and he spoke to some people there and he came back and he was like I don't want to go there and I was like why not he said because it just I didn't fit in it, I just it was just didn't feel right that's and another think, tough one yeah that too sorry go ahead and and I think that relates to that that the the ways of behaving and the ways of thinking that certain people in society have that mean they're way more likely to get into Oxford or Cambridge yeah. that that automatically excludes a whole bunch of other people yeah. regardless of merit you know and so people like Stormzy the grime music artist in the UK has he set up a fund to allow people of color specifically black people really to get into these institutions so they can start shifting the ground that the institution is built on so they widen their understanding i think it's great yeah. but those institutions become the people that produce all the prime ministers yeah. and it, it's horrific when you think about it yeah but the those structures just are keep in place the way things are and it's oh, yeah, very totally. very subtle and it's really interesting to hear that you could, you're just supposed to figure out how to write an essay that's like or how to answer the question to me that's mad i can't believe it oh it's completely mad <laughs> oh my god what so are you most say? of the you time were... most of high school is not the case it's particularly when you get to the, the high level in last year and then at university even more so so that automatically excludes a whole bunch of people but right? even even in high school the way i remember it how to structure an essay was knowledge that was shared among peers because somebody knew it. It wasn't really something that was, so it was a little bit gone over. And this was a long time ago, so I might be misremembering. I'm going to have to check with teacher friends. Um, but certainly there is a lot of insider el elitist knowledge in France that you're just supposed to know. So if you don't have the parents wow. who know to tell you that, wow, then you don't have a leg up. It's the same, I suppose it's the same stuff that happens here in a different way you yeah. know like the so much of the what we're talking about behind this question should i do a master's is going into the structures that are set in place to you're supposed to stay in your lane you're supposed to stay at your level you don't try and better yourself and the everybody seems to want to do and want to have a master's because it's a bit like having a degree do you think that the degree do you think degrees have been devalued Have I frozen? Have you frozen? It seems like you've frozen. Um, uh, he maybe he wants to wish you happy birthday. What's happening? I think a lot of people, and I have a lot. I just woke up this morning thinking I have urgent wow, work to finish today week, because I just took a weekend assignment, and uh, and I'm gonna have to just foil people or just not stay on the phone with anybody wishing me happy birthday. Well, we can record you video messages. So the so masters, masters badge of honor shows where you are in society makes you better than other people so my question to you is yes do you think degrees have, no have become devalued because oh yeah that's where we were at okay uh yeah. so i have no idea how to answer that question i mean i have no idea how to answer most of your questions but that's where I've, <laughs> <laughs> that's where i was going with i know that there's a lot of talk i don't know about the uk in france there's a lot of talk about how education is the level of education has gone down yeah the curriculum is being simplified yeah, uh, nobody's learning what they should be or kids are not as smart as they were or etc which yeah. i have no idea if it's just like old people talking about the good old days or if it's actually true or if it's the true how, how do you measure that yeah uh, but i mean thinking this is something i've said i think i've said this on uh, in our conversations before like being being a teenager being a younger person now i wouldn't want to be i think it's harder I think there's so much more it's, to navigate. So maybe they are devalued because one of the weird things is like everybody, so, and parents are still thinking that of the, well, parents, I mean, actually, I, well, this is weird because most of the people are parents are my age anyway. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Tell me about it. Tell me about it. <laughs> um, so everything you were saying earlier about the parents of your students that are saying, uh, or pupils or students that are saying, you know, you should need the masters. So you have the badge, you need it from the, there's more and more kids that need it, that are going for the same thing, that all have the masters. But the weird point is then 
then you all have it, but then it, it doesn't get you anywhere because it's all that is filtered through is the ability to go one step more in a job application process, maybe, unless you're learning, you're really vocationally learning what you're doing and what you're studying for mm -hmm. either the love of it or the, or that it's, you know, well, the love of it, or because as we said earlier, you're, you want to work in a regulated industry that makes it that you need that kind of degree. Hmm. Um, so it's really difficult to say whether they've been devalued. I don't know, but what's certainly true, I think, answering the question the other way around, is that everything else is devalued and undervalued. Everything else. Well, uh, any other profession that doesn't take going to a master's, like crafts we were talking about earlier, or oh, trades yeah. jobs. That what's crazy is that it's a, it's an image and a stigma thing, and we talked about this in another episode, mm. I think. Mm, that, we did. And it's, it's so the, uh, in France, you're asked like even younger if you want to go to a trade school or something like that. So it's usually taken as you know you're going to the dumb school, which is horrible and a shame and unfortunate that there's not more skills and training. It's it's in France at least they're trying to do that a little bit more. In Germany, I think it's been a lot more valued because they've they really is. put effort for a long time into yeah, they did. Uh, working, study, alternate programs. Uh, so, is. yeah, I don't know if a master's degree is under is is overvalued, but I do know that every like anything else you could do is undervalued. Mm. Um, I think because it, you know we, we we talked about the the status thing and the reputation of going to the big school, which does carry a lot of weight. And the thing to know is if you don't have that, uh, it doesn't mean that you, know, you can't be smart. It doesn't mean that you're not going to be But You know, when you come across those kinds of circles, there might be some, uh, you know, like your friend said that, that when he went to visit Oxford and not part of that world. Mm. Uh, and when you mentioned the artist, who was it again? Sorry. Um, who's, who's, Oh, Stormzy. Stormzy. He's created the Sorry, fun yes. to get, yeah. The fun to get uh, people of color, black people to those big universities or universities in general. And hopefully along with that is, because I've heard those kinds of stories too. And of course I'm not, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm just a I'm privileged majority white guy, but um, uh, so anybody who's not fitting within their environment has to realize and ideally has support to help them deal with the fact that they are evolving and not their environment. Yeah. And it's difficult, even more difficult yeah. to that the, than the general level that's being asked, which is also another reason why technically you're like, well, working on merit is all very good and it's a great idea. But if you come from a, not the same socioeconomic status, uh, you come from an environment where your parents didn't teach you because they didn't know the codes of what yes. you're supposed to write, how you're supposed to write uh, an essay or a program or anything else and say you didn't necessarily have the money. So you're not you don't have the best uh, studying environment or the most ideal. You maybe you don't have your own desk. Maybe you don't have your own room. Um, maybe your parents are working really hard. So you have mm -hmm. to help around the house. So you don't have as much time for studying those all those things that, you know, are taken for granted if I buy a higher socioeconomic status. And then they're like, and then everybody's like, because everybody's revolving around their own universe and everybody thinks that everybody else is like that. So, so when you, you may work really hard, if you don't have that kind of environment to go one step up to a better university, but you're coming at it from, um, you have a, you have a handicap from the get go. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to work extra hard to get up to speed with everything and imagining it's not even your environment so you also have to learn the codes and you know be with kids that are mean because kids are mean uh, and it comes with the teenage years of wanting to belong which if you're not in your in-group and you're way you're far away from home it's even more difficult i mean this is a whole other topic i've gone off tangent but i guess no i think i think it all fits into the a bit like what, how you think about things if the question is, should I do a master's, then what's underneath is that? It's, it's how do I be successful in life? Yeah. Does it, you know, if I get a master's, that means I can earn more money and be successful and have the life I want to lead. And I think that's what's underneath that question. And that's like, it's, it's so much of what younger people 
are trying to understand and navigate. But which is and maybe the silly part is, is you want to earn a lot of money, be a plumber. Yeah. Yeah. Or an electrician. They make a lot yeah. of money. Yeah. They often make more money than most people with masters will. Yeah. 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 Is it, so it's the same in France. It's certainly like that here. Yeah, absolutely. They make a good living. It's a tough job. But it, it also it's craft and it, it you know, we need them. It's true. It's true. You won't have as hard a time finding work as a plumber than you will with your master's degree not knowing what you're doing. And I say not knowing because I know I didn't I had no idea. And a lot of students are studying things that are just vague business, human sciences that is all um knowledge that you can gather anywhere i mean i i, I don't mind know <laughs> but i do have the impression because i've lived through this and i've seen a lot of them yeah that a lot of students go for some kind of human sciences or business because they really don't know what they're doing they totally don't know great. what they want to do um and a lot of those degrees are not that they're useless because you learn a lot of stuff it's not the point but it, it, you're not better off. You're, what are you looking for after that? Are you going for some office job? But this no, is not this wrong. Is what... It's not wrong. It's just like, no. it's it's exactly what you said. And where I want to go first is like, why are you asking me this question? This is what's interesting about And of the... course, your parents want you to go. So I don't know. Sorry, go ahead. You know, what I was going to say was that uh, they do those kinds of degree because they don't know what they want to do. But then real world relevant experience in an organization where you've produced an actual result becomes what differentiates you from everybody else. You know, like uh, the, some of my students could quite easily the, use the stuff that we're talking about in the business, like qualification, to go to, the, to a local shop that they really like and say, look, let me do, I'll do a, some basic research for you. I'll do a SWOT analysis and I'll make, I'll give you three recommendations of how you can increase your footfall in your shop i'll do that i'll do a little document for you and the person running the shop would bite their hand off because of they don't have time to do that they would love that you know or like something another one of my students i've said really? to them. i mean maybe but most shop owners i mean i don't know maybe i'm wrong I, I think i agree but also a lot of so this is also the thing that's difficult on advice and giving advice in my line of work as well is yeah. everybody knows better. They don't, they're like, why, what, uh, what analysis? No, I know how to run my shop. I've been doing it for however many years. Thank you very that's much. True. Just like move on. That's true. That's true. But that's why, uh, that's why the, that the said, but maybe some, hopefully some smart one would go, okay, young guy, why you know, sure. Give me your analysis. I'll take That's it. why the, um, the relationship with the shop is really important. Like, so another example is uh, a hockey club. So, uh, so one of my ex pupils, he, he really involved in the hockey club and he, he, he did it himself. He, he was like thinking about all the stuff he learned in business A-level and was like, why don't you do this to, you know, think about the membership? And they were like, oh yeah, we never thought of that. Or well, why don't you do that? So he went and did it. That's and great. like that kind of thing, there are opportunities like that that require somebody who's willing to do it to take what's happening in the university or the A-levels or the school and make it relevant to someone in real life. That is... Now, that differentiates him from every other student out there who's got a degree because he's done something real. Whereas my parents will say to me, do a master's because it's great and you'll have a master's and you'll be really cool. And I'll say, yeah, but if I can't make it relevant to what's happening in a school or in a business, then I can't see the point of doing it. Now, however, if I wanted doing a master's in data analytics really appeals to me because I just find that kind of thing really interesting. But then I'm always thinking, well, how could I make this relevant to my school? How could, how, how could it save time for the data manager in my school? Well, how could I go off and create a cool infographic about men's fertility, which is an area that really interests me, or masculinity, which is another thing that interests me, or relationships, you know? like So using what I'm learning to provide value in a real world context. Okay. That comes naturally to me. I think that comes naturally to you but it doesn't come naturally to younger people who are like, how do I be successful? Oh, I'll do a master's. I don't think it came <laughs> naturally to me when I was younger as well. I mean, I had no idea what I was doing. <laughs> but I think it comes naturally to you now. I think the way you think about brands, play, 
you want to you the, I, I think you balance that creative and that logical yes i like to think that thing. and uh, and i i'm surprised when people in, who are do my job and i come across a lot of i was talking about that with a friend yesterday um I've been told that some people in, in, in work environments appreciated the fact that I come at things from a busy, very numbers and business oriented perspective, but mm. I'm also very creative. Mm. And I have come across other strategists who look at things from a very rational and pragmatic perspective, mm -hmm. but without the creative side. Mm. And you need a creative flair to what we're doing. Otherwise, it's just, it's just what's missing on that side is some people, and I, this is controversial, I think, but I think some people in my line of work are, are trying to find the right answer and believe that if they look at enough numbers, they will find the number, like the, the number answer. Mm -hmm. That there's a number that answers the question or the challenge that the business is dealing with mm -hmm. or a set of numbers. That's rarely true. I don't mm. think it's true. I think you could just like you now analyze the data and having more data tells you a lot more things. Mm -hmm. So that is very, very, very important. But the answer is in how you interpret things and interpreting things has a creative streak to it because you completely you're agree. we're supposed to be creative problem solvers and you can use the numbers to make them say anything. Totally agree. And most of the time, those numbers are flawed to begin with, particularly in my line of work where the numbers are uh, market research data. And I'm like, wait a minute, market research data. So for example, I'm working on this project assignment and uh, well, this, this is confidential. So I'm just thinking of something I can say without giving anything away. Um, I, okay, let's just manage the general, uh, so it's non-specific, but um, market research data that I look at very often, right? Yeah. The way the so market research data is not objective. It's yep. not because one, it's always sampled. Yep. Meaning that you are trying to derive something that millions, you know, 70 million people in the UK or say uh, half of them that might have the product or service that we're talking about. Um, you know, how you know, if you're selling TVs, everybody has one. So it's like, well, all right, we're talking to everybody. Great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, but that's, that's also, uh, so the more experience I have and the more I'm like, so and the people, there's huge departments that are dedicated or entirely industries that are dedicated to producing those numbers. So you can't yep. mock them. It's very serious, right? Yep. Um, but I'm like, okay, I'm taking everything. I'll take everything with a pinch of salt is always good advice. Um, and you see, oh, okay. So, so here's a good example. There is a, you know, XKCD, the, the web cartoon? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yep. Right? So it's <laughs> yeah. stick figure, web cartoon. Yeah. There's yeah. one of my favorites, which is... Uh, the, uh, so it's, it's for, it's a dude, like a stick figure dude showing a map of the States with heat maps, uh, heat, heat spots. Yeah. So big round circles at different points of the map. And, uh, one says, you know, the, the number of people who love the color blue, the other one says the number of people with a high definition screen TV. And the third one says like the number of people with, uh, a foot fetish. And then the, <laughs> then the last spot is the stick figure person is showing the, and says, well, obviously the implications are extremely clear for our business plan. <laughs> and the, the caption, the caption is the problem with heat maps is they only show population centers. Yeah. <laughs> oh yes, of course. It's like, well, the results from your research is showing me that everybody that there's a lot more people in London. So because there's a lot more people in London, there's a lot more people that do or have the thing we're talking about. Oh, all our target audience is in London. I'm like, well, well obviously. Yeah. We're, that reminds of me of that. That reminds me of a website, Spurious Correlations. Yes, that one's it's fantastic. It's such a great. Actually, I don't know that website, but I love the name. I need to check it out. So it's like a um, number of people who drowned in a pool and number of films that Nicolas Cage is in or something oh, that's fantastic. per year. There's so many stupid things and they correlate like massively. Like, of course, you know, and I teach this correlation doesn't mean cause. And I make fun of it. I'm saying like, oh yeah, you could correlate the number of ginger people with negatively with its economic performance or whatever. It's just, you can come up with stupid stuff. But the so I do that and I'm going to use that as a rationale to support a story to sell a concept. 
some people would get very it's quite controversial what i'm saying because i'm like yeah i think we can say whatever you want as long as it makes <laughs> sense and everybody buys the story yeah uh, okay. but but some people i think in my line of work are really looking for the right answer this is really interesting and it's because... not I, I don't i think you know i'm not saying there is no right answer if you have the right numbers and if you have all the most of the time like this weekend I'm going blind. I don't have anything, but I have to come up with the right answer that everybody's going to buy and everybody's going to find it extraordinary. <laughs> so I'm that trying idea. to find as many numbers about the research, the industry I'm working on, which is something that I hadn't worked on for a while. Um, but I certainly do not have the specific situation of the business that I'm working on in question, or very little. I have a little bit of information, but very little. I'm always and, used and, to having very little information. And I think that's what it comes down to, because I find the same thing in teaching. We, we've got a lot of useful data, but no, teach what teachers don't have is data literacy to be able to interpret, which balances being okay with numbers and being creative. You have to have both because then you can come up with useful solutions. And the more I think that you spend doing a degree or doing your masters, the more you discover, it's a bit like that thing, the more, the more you realize you don't know, the more you dig into it. And I think that's what happens. You do a degree, you do a master's, the more you realize you don't know, the more comfortable you become with making interpretations and judgments based on the information you have, because that's what there is to do. And that's what ultimately, I suppose, a business might pay you for, or that's certainly what my, the parents at my school are paying for, creative solutions, for their child to be able to do well at whatever they want to do. And I'll come and say something controversial, like they don't have to go to university. And they're like, what? I'm like, they don't. <laughs> and I, I have probably shouldn't have said that, but it does get me in trouble sometimes. I can <laughs> but... imagine. <laughs> it's, it's a difficult notion for people to understand. If everything is forced and you just go because you're supposed to, you question nothing. Mm. and questioning is where you learn mm. Mm. having skepticism mm. is where you learn yeah and if you're not discussing the kind of questions that we discuss now then you also don't see the value in pursuing what you're doing yeah and so there has to be i mean i think i both strongly believe for there to be value in choosing to go do a master's there has to be like consideration of like do you need to do it and why and what and that there is an option of not doing it now, of course, for a parent and for a lot of parents in a lot of different situations, it might be difficult to hear. Uh, and also we just, so the way we operate as human beings is simplifying everything. Yes. So you don't have to think about too many options. And we go by, actually, Mark Maron has a fantastic bit in his new Netflix special. Uh, he, he says something like, well, it really, he's very funny and quite dry, but um, he says, really, like the, the, all the stuff that we know, if you really boil it down and think about it for two seconds, and the things that you're saying that you're absolutely persuaded on, completely true believer in the fact that you're spewing, is you just really, you heard it from somebody, some 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 dude said it sometime. Like, I might have heard it in the conversation I had with James, but I'm sure it's true. You're like, well, <laughs> really? Did you... <laughs> It, having the answer is what people want. And sometimes there is no yeah. answer. You kind of got to figure it out yourself. That, that's the curtain. And uh, so a couple more things I was thinking about. I'm listening to this fantastic lecture from Alan Watts about the Joker. Ah, it's so good. I really need so to good. listen to that. Um, and uh, it's three and a half hours. And I need to listen to way more Alan Watts. I'm realizing I'm, I'm, I haven't listened to a lot. I have a book as well that I haven't read. Um, he's so good. Uh, and I got to a part of a book that I'd already heard about. And I was thinking about that when we were talking just earlier, you were talking about the, um, uh, the thinking about what you want to study and studying it at the same time. Yeah. Because he talks about a book, but I have to read and I'd heard about it before called the, it's something about Zen Buddhism and the art of archery. Oh, okay. And there's a whole bit, he, in the book and that he talks about it in the, in the talk about when you're an archer, you have to be, think and shoot at the same time. 
you can't think and aim and then shoot. You have to aim shoot in the same action. Yeah. It's one yeah. action. Yeah. And so you have to shoot before you even think about it. And if you don't have enough training in the art of archery, you can't because if you think about what you're doing and then aim and then shoot, I mean, imagine yourself in a situation, it just doesn't work. So there's a whole yeah. really, it goes into depth about that. And uh, I find it a really interesting notion that you have to master something sufficiently that it comes automatically before you even think about it, but your thinking happens at the same time you're acting. And I believe I have enough experience now to start doing that when I'm interpreting numbers and which gives me the ability to produce the kind of documents I can occasionally, like I'm going to have to this weekend in 48 hours. Uh, and I already yep. dallied a little bit too long yesterday while doing research because I still have no idea what I'm doing. I'm probably going to have to work late tonight. No, um, it, um, as I was hearing you say that about thinking and acting and whatever, I had the same thing. I think I had the same thing with numbers and data and whatever but also with teaching so like when i train teachers i will they'll watch me teach and then i'll say i'll ask them why did i do that and i can say why i did something in a particular way to them after i've done it at the time though i'm thinking about and doing it at the same time yes if that made any sense at all it did <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure people who anyway i got it <laughs> <laughs> like I mean, I let me if I give you like I will say, I will I will stop talking, move to another part of the room, carry on talking, and then I'll ask the person who's watching me teach why did I do that, and they'll go uh, because you wanted to explain the point. I said no, it's because I won't move and talk at the same time because I want them to listen to what I'm saying, and I move to that part of the room because I can see everybody, and they go. Oh, wow. I'm like, yeah, you have to think about that stuff when you're teaching. <laughs> it's so it's, I said, but that comes from putting in the hours yeah. that comes from dwelling in it and doing it a lot, which I guess. But and the fact lot. that you're able to teach that and then you know, it is great too. Yeah. yeah and yeah. it's interesting. I, as I spoke, I just realized for myself. Uh, so I have this, this document to produce by tomorrow. <laughs> and I went into the pitfall because you do, you know, you, you do yesterday, I think for a bit, I was doing research to find the knowledge to then do the work. Not as opposed both the to, same, as opposed to what we're talking about, which is doing and acting at the same time. Okay. Okay. Thinking and create. So I have to write a presentation document. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't have a lot of time. So I have to create the document as I'm thinking about the document at the same time. Yeah. Rather than research, analyze, synthesize, and then write the document. Does that make it, sense? I'm not yeah, sure it, it does. makes sense. No, no, it does. It does. Yeah, but that's that's kind of what I teach. Because I you're teach hoping, them. and I was talking about exactly that. Other people that uh, that might be not having as much experience in my line of work, yeah, or yeah. many lines of work, I think, we're trying to find the right answer, and from research probably, and when they have the right answer, the right number, the right whatever, right insight, the right angle, the right thing. Then the then, answer, then you can do the thing. It doesn't work like that. It all happens at once in one big loop of At least like, it stuff. can. And I usually find the more experience I have and the, the, the more I realize there's no just the answer happens. But it's also scary because then it means I have to trust the process. And it's not that it's not like you shouldn't research. Of course, at the same time, I needed to do what I was doing yesterday because I'm working on an industry that I know very little about. So I needed to find out what's going on in it. This is perfect. Now I actually have to go in, in about fifteen minutes. Yeah, we're late call. anyway. So, but the but I, there's a couple of things I want to end with, which is yeah. that that question about should you do a master's? You don't. It's it's a whole life is a whole ongoing discovery, and it's. You've got to go look for yourself and make a judgment for yourself. There's no straight answer. But the other thing, I'm reading that book, The War of Art. Oh, yeah. And so much of what you just said is in that book. Oh, cool. I think it's a really, really great book. I need Highly to read recommend it. it. I'll add it to the yeah. many, many books on my list. <laughs> it's it's really like short and easy book. And yeah. he on his on his website, he has a like an audio course and each there's only there's only five things and they're like 10 to 15 minutes each. Yeah, so, really cool. But 
What an interesting conversation. It is. Like, and I would yeah. add, like, it's not a straight up answer, just as you said, but I would still maintain the thing I said earlier in the part A of our conversation. <laughs> <laughs> that is not going to be there uh is is uh, the uh if you don't know what you want to do maybe take a short break for the summer but it, it, choose a master's that you'll be interested in if yeah. what you need to do is please your parents or whatever then mm. choose something think about what you're going to be really interested in studying and choose something along those lines and yeah you might as well just do it now and get it over with so you have it mm. and then you, later you can always study again but and and if you don't want it, then know that, you know, it comes with all the stuff that we spoke about, which is fine. And then choose a direction of what you do want to do. And also talk to your parents about like, this is why, because I want to do this and this and this. They may agree or disagree, but hopefully at the end of the day, they may well just respect the fact that you thought it through and that you have reasons. And that's a great point. Yeah. Not just, oh, I'm bored with school now and I'm going to go live my life, which is, I guess is fine, but you know thinking it through and talking about it right yeah for sure thank you and on that note on that note well and for real there's no part d though hopefully we'll just talk <laughs> <about this. laughs> we might I'll, I'll keep in touch we might take a break for next week i'm not sure yet okay cool all cool. right bye <laughs>